Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to my slouchy everyday life. Okay, I'm just going to be casual. It's the second day of Christmas. I'm not going to be glamming up for anything, so I'm just at home. You're going to have to excuse my uh, slouchy outfit. The most glam I'm gonna get today is the makeup on my face, just because I really wanted to test out a new eyeshadow palette that I recently got. Anyway, let's just jump into today's video because I'm actually really excited to do this. The idea for it was totally stolen or... Okay, let's put it nicer. Borrowed from my good friend uh, Bia from Bia and the Makeup here on YouTube. I'm going to leave her channel and the video that she made uh, in the description box below for you because I would highly recommend that you go and uh, see it. Bia is super lovely. I absolutely love watching her videos. She's also a European based YouTuber like myself and we, ha we, we have this like shared taste in makeup I feel like. We, we like a lot of the same things and I always really like hearing her thought process and the eloquent way in which she describes um, why she picked out certain palettes, why she likes them, why she dislikes them, that kind of thing. She does reviews, she does first impressions. Um, she's super lovely. Really go check her out. I love her. So a couple of days ago or weeks ago, the concept of time is a little bit abstract to me at this point, um, she posted this video which was basically eyeshadow palettes that she has a complicated relationship with. And I thought that was of course a really cool idea, so I wanted to do it myself. So the way I interpreted this whole video idea is, these are palettes in my collection that I theoretically really, really like. There's nothing wrong with the quality. I like the... Um, eyeshadows, I like the color stories, I like pretty much everything about these palettes theoretically, but in practice when push comes to shove, I don't tend to pick out these palettes from my collection when I'm going to do my makeup. So my my, my eyes just kind of gloss over them and when I do actually pick them out there's like a little bit of that feeling of guilt that dictates, okay, I should probably use that palette every now and then. I picked out six eyeshadow palettes from my collection and the one that I'm going to start off with is probably one that you're going to immediately guess why I have a complicated relationship with and that is the 10 year anniversary palette from Kat Von D. I don't have a problem with the palette, I don't have a problem with any of her um, holiday palette releases, nor do I have a problem with her 10 year anniversary palette in terms of the color story and the quality of the palette. I have a problem with Kat Von D herself, that is something I've already mentioned so many times on my channel that I just don't want to reiterate. Since Kat Von D has decided to be an ignorant moron, I'm not going to support the brand that she represents anymore. This palette was released shortly before the whole anti-vax drama exploded and unfortunately I had only used it very few times. I actually have a three, three looks one palette uh, collab with Amber that I did that I can link in the cards here for you if you want to check it out that I've done with this palette and when I started using it and I first got it I really really enjoyed it just like I enjoyed the Saint Zinner palette and the Metal Matte palette which are two of my favorite palettes ever. Unfortunately shortly after that Kat Von D decided to be a moron and my feelings for all of her palettes grew cold and now I don't pick any of them from my collection even though I truly truly like the color stories and I enjoy the quality of her eyeshadows. So even though this palette is totally something that theoretically I enjoy and I would have picked out many more times this year, unfortunately because of the feelings that I have for Kat Von D I cannot look at a product she made without thinking of her and how mad I am at her stance in life that unfortunately now this eyeshadow palette is kind of one of those palettes that I have a complicated relationship with and it's not because of the palette itself, it's because of Kat Von D. The next palette I want to mention is, is one that I have recently obtained and you're probably going to be surprised to already see in this video. This is the Paleo palette from Cleona Cosmetics. Cleona Cosmetics is a Canadian indie brand and they hand paint and hand make the packaging of their palettes. Um, which is why this gorgeous thing is completely hand painted. I very much appreciate the unique color story and the unique take on making the packaging of this palette, however I have a complicated relationship with it for several reasons. Let me tell you those reasons. Uh, first of all something that I completely agree with because it was also a palette that Bia mentioned. Um, this palette only has two mattes, the mustard, ye the mustard yellow and the burgundy brownie shade over here. And while they're really nice mattes, there are quite a few shades in this palette that just don't fit with these two mattes. So if you want to do your makeup with only this palette, it's going to be a little bit tricky. 
this is, I would say, the minor reason for me to have a complicated relationship with this palette because I don't mind pulling out other palettes for the mattes if I want to do like a green look or a purple look or a bl super blue look, whatever. I don't mind pulling out another palette. Um, I actually feel like this palette pairs very well with the subculture from Anastasia. That being said, the main reason why I have a complicated relationship with this palette is because I find myself wanting more from it. The metallic formula of Cleona Cosmetics is not one of my favorites and that is a personal preference. I am sure that for a lot of people this is a gorgeous formula and they absolutely would love working with it but just for me personally I prefer my, my metallics to be much more creamy and saturated and I already said that I believe also in my review that um, these metallics feel a little bit drier. You can definitely um, apply them on the lid and they will look beautiful, especially this blue over here I feel like is a really really pretty shade and really impactful shade. Another reason why I feel I always want a little bit more from this palette is the duochromes. And once again this is a totally personal preference. I've been around in the eyeshadows for a very long time and I can tell you that a lot of the duochromes in this palette exist in loose eyeshadow formula already for a very long time from other brands. And I have those eyeshadows from other brands with much stronger duochromes. And because I'm used to the much stronger and impactful duochromes, these do not impress me. For instance, this shade over here is like an orangey green gold duochrome. and. When I think of this shade, I always have to think of Visions from Notoriously Morbid because Visions is superior. It's just the better version of this eyeshadow and if I want to go for a look which involves this kind of shift, I would rather choose Visions to this eyeshadow palette. You see what I mean? That's why I always feel like I gloss over this palette because I always find myself wanting just a little bit more from these eyeshadows and they are just not quite at the level at which I enjoy my metallics. Okay, the next eyeshadow palette I have a somewhat more complicated relationship with is the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now, this was the very first Anastasia palette that I have ever purchased. I've never had any of the palettes that I had released prior to the permanent release of this palette. So this was my very first touch with Anastasia Beverly Hills in terms of eyeshadows and maybe... Yeah, no, I already had the brow pomade, so I had tried Anastasia Beverly Hills products for the brows before, but I had never tried anything from their eyeshadow range, and this was the first eyeshadow palette that I purchased from them, and my first, you know, exposure to their eyeshadow formula. This is a beautiful formula. This is a gorgeous color story, because it is a very, very beautiful and unique take on the warm tone palette trend. It's an eyeshadow palette with berries and gold and champagnes and a little bit of orange, bronze, anything you want from a neutral eyeshadow palette with a little bit of a twist to it. Now, I have a difficult relationship with this palette for two reasons. First of all, it only has two shimmery eyeshadows, the Primavera and Vermeer shades, and while they're beautiful shades, I wouldn't even call them metallic, they're more of like a satin sheen type of situation and I prefer super foiled, super impactful, super in-your-face metallic formula. So if they had something like pink champagne for instance in here, it would have been much more up my alley than the shades that are in here. But I understand the reasoning. I think this is meant to be a more ethereal, more subtle, more subdued palette, which is great for people who have that style, but it's just not my style. The other reason I have a complicated relationship with this palette is the whole color story. Um, I found out that berries are not really something that I reach for or something that I think looks super flattering on me. So whenever I think of this palette, I always think of, oh, berries. Nah, let's not. I do pick out this palette uh, quite often for like the more browny, peachy shades, this orange here, the antique bronze shade here, which I think is absolutely stunning. I do pick it out for these shades and I combine them with my Colourpop eyeshadows or like other metallic eyeshadows from other brands or Anastasia Beverly Hills themselves. But I have to say, I don't reach for this palette much and I kind of always gloss over it. I would much rather pick my Norvina palette or the Prism palette or Subculture over this one just because neither the color story nor the metallic shades in here are something that I am super into. Another eyeshadow palette that I have a complicated relationship with is the Semi-Sweet Chocolate Bar from Too Faced. Now, mind you, this was probably the first true neutral eyeshadow palette that I ever got and I've already had this for quite some years. I believe at least 2015. 
at least 2015, maybe even earlier than that. So when this eyeshadow palette joined my collection, this was pretty much the only true neutral eyeshadow palette that I owned and I absolutely loved it. I love this uh, caramel shade over here, the gold, I really like this topper shade. I just love this eyeshadow palette. Um, the blue in here is not a blue that you should write home about, but that being said, it provides a little bit of something something to an eyeshadow palette that would otherwise be completely warm neutral. It actually has even some shades that I would consider more on the cool tone side, for instance these two here, this pinky shade over here. I like this palette, I really really do. However, ever since the release of the Naked Heat palette from Urban Decay, um, this one has taken second spot in my neutral warm eyeshadow palette favorites and I just kind of never reach for it because I, whenever I think of, oh I'm going to do something warm neutral today, the first palette that I'm going to reach for is the Naked Heat and it's not going to be the Semi Sweet. While I feel like this palette actually provides much more variety in the kind of looks that you can create because the Naked Heat, while I love it, is a, sh is a shadow palette that you can only create sort of monochromatic, monotonous smoky looks. Like you can't even reach much of a contrast with the eyeshadow looks that you're going to create with the Naked Heat palette and still I reach for it much more often than I do this one even though this one is a gorgeous warm neutral eyeshadow palette and it provides you with even more variety of shades compared to the Naked Heat. So I have a complicated relationship with this palette and when I do pick it out it's mostly because of nostalgia and because I feel guilty that I never use it but honestly she and I have a very complicated relationship at the moment. Alright, the next eyeshadow palette I wanted to show you, let me take her out of her cardboard box, is the Viseur Petit Pro 3 palette, which looks like this. It has the size of a super mini mobile phone, not even a mobile phone, I think nobody makes mobile phones that are this small anymore. But this is a beautiful eyeshadow palette in terms of color story and in terms of um, quality of the eyeshadows, because... I'd heard so much about the Viseur formula that I really wanted to try it, but I did not want to invest in their bigger eyeshadow palettes because I dislike the packaging, I think it's really plastic and really cheap looking and I just don't want to splurge so much on an eyeshadow formula that I may or may not like. So I decided to invest in this small thing because it has 8 eyeshadows, which is great, they are small, which is fantastic, and you get quite a variety in terms of shades. You get purples, you get greens, you get neutrals, basically such a small palette and so much potential and yet I never used this palette after that first one or two times that I used it after I first bought it and the reason for that is because I feel like the metallic formula of Viseart just like the ones from the modern renaissance from Anastasia is not my thing these are subtle they don't pack a punch they're not reflect they look much prettier in the pen that they apply on the eye in my opinion and I just kind of always gloss over this palette. I don't even pick it out for the mattes, which are actually really lovely. I understood from a lot of you who watched my review of this palette that you liked Viseart formula precisely because it's so subtle, but tastes differ, you know, what you consider to be superior is something that I would consider to be inferior and the other way around and that's great, we all have different um, tastes but that is the reason why I have a complicated relationship with the Viseart eyeshadow formula and why I just never reach for this palette alright, and the last eyeshadow palette I want to mention is the Lunatic Labs Zombie Defense palette now, in terms of color story and like whole wholesome aesthetics of the packaging, this palette is Fabulous. I've had this palette for a really long time, by the way. This is, I want to say circa 2014. This is awesome. It has the shape of a coffin. It has a bunch of horror movie characters on the inside of the packaging. And it has a bat-shaped mirror. Not to mention the colors. There's a royal blue, there is a burgundy, there is a beautiful, vibrant, very unique shade of green. And there is a purple. Theoretically, a fabulous palette for me to work with. Um, the reason I never reach for this palette is the following. The eyeshadow formula of Lunatic Labs used to be very, very crumbly. I don't know, I think they may have changed that in the meantime because I think they received quite a lot of critique for that, but I'm not sure you're going to be able to see just if I um, show you the pens up close. These eyeshadows are super crumbly. As soon as you put your brush into them, there is powder all over the place and 
these eyeshadow palettes actually come with little acrylic protectors that you can use to repress the eyeshadows. Like Lunatic Labs even provides you with the acrylic um, thingies to repress the eyeshadows because they were aware of how these, how soft and crumbly these eyeshadows are. So because of the mess this eyeshadow pal palette always makes, I kind of never tend to reach for it. Even though I truly enjoy the colors um, and I truly enjoy the formula and I have loved creating looks with this palette. I used it a lot when I first got it, but after that I got a lot of eyeshadow palettes with similar colors and I just never reached for this, aside from the green, because this green is not something that I've seen done very often. So the green is the only one that I kind of reach for here. So guys, these were the eyeshadow palettes that I have a complicated relationship with. Let me know in the comments which are yours. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!